All right, there we go. <laughs> this thing is awkward. Okay, let's see if I can explain this. Um, so we're basically gonna be doing 3D motion capture where I get three points and tell Blender where they are in 3D space. And I'm gonna be doing those points on my arm. We'll see how this works. It's gonna be a little bit limited. Normally with motion capture, people have like a room full of cameras that can pick up all of these points. And we're only gonna have like six points and we're only gonna have two cameras. This is my witness camera. And the whole idea is we're gonna have, well, the camera I'm using right now to be the main camera. That's what we're capturing for the final shot. And then this witness camera will be able to capture a third axis. So this camera only sees X and Y and this camera will be able to fill in the Z axis for us. So that's, that's the basic explanation and breakdown. And we're just gonna place these cameras one front on and then one at 90 degrees. Actually probably coming from this angle. So yeah, that's the idea. Let's see if I can get set up here. Okay, so now's the tricky part where I actually figure out how to put these markers on my arm without them getting obscured. I think I probably mentioned it, but the cool thing about having a room full of cameras is at any point in time you can see most of the markers. But our limitation here is since we only have two cameras to see our six markers, we got to make sure that we can see them at all times which might be a bit of a pain in the butt, but we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna try and mark the wrist on the front, the elbow on the front, and then the shoulder on the front. And then I'm gonna see if I can do that on the sides of my arm as well. And another limitation, <laughs> there seem to be a lot of those, is that we are just tracking points. We're not actually tracking the rotation of the arm. And if we had more points and more cameras, we could actually start to get an idea of how my arm is rotating. But since we're, once again, only doing six points, it's only gonna be location of these points that we're gonna be able to figure out. Oh, I thought it was raining there for a second. That was gonna be scary. Let's see, that's not quite the side. Ow. Okay, cool. Shoulder position. Now it's just a matter of putting some Sharpie that's trackable on each point, and I'm left-handed, so putting it on with my right hand is not the prettiest sight you've ever seen. I wonder if that's gonna even be visible. I really hope so. All right, so we got shoulders, we got elbows, and we got wrists. Cool. Oh, and we've also got a bonus mark on this hand by accident. And I think I got my shirt too at some point. <laughs> okay, so here's the footage I got. You'll notice at the start I clapped just so I can synchronize the clips later. Another really important thing is to have these at the same frame rate. So these are both 24 frames per second. If you have different frame rates like 30 and 24, things can get real messy real quick. But really the only other thing to keep in mind with this footage is that you should just be able to see all the trackers throughout it. The witness camera actually lost a bit towards the end because of a highlight. So we'll probably not be able to track that part, but not a big deal. Now, we just hope that that was successful and we go back to our computer. All right, so we're in the Blenderverse here. Let's swap over to our movie clip editor and open our clips here. I'm gonna select the main one first. I've just exported it to an image sequence, which accidentally started as a few blank frames, but we'll deal with that later. If we split the window up here, we can actually drop in another movie clip at the same time, and this can be our witness shot. So if we scroll forward a few frames, you can see we've got the clapping motion. It's not quite synchronized. This frame is where the hands actually connect together. So if we go over onto this side and bump up the frame offset, there we go. Now it's synchronized. Cool. So here's the front, here's the side. And let's actually just set our scene frames real quick once it's synchronized. This looks like a good start frame. I'm gonna go Control and Home, and that'll set the start frame, or you could use this here. 
And let's just scroll through until we think it's good enough. You can see here on the side view, we don't have that much dynamic range and we accidentally got some sunlight and that just completely obliterates this tracking marker. So I'm going to stop it around here. So I'm going to go back over the timeline, control and end, and that'll set the end frame for us. All right, cool. So let's start out with the front and just start tracking these. If we go shift and left arrow, that'll set us to the start frame. And we can just go over here real quick. Let's switch the motion model to location and rotation. And let's just hold down control and click this tracking marker. Hit E and track markers forwards. If we hit L, we can see that locked to the view. Just make sure it's behaving. Okay, that looks like it went pretty well throughout the whole footage. We can do that with the elbow as well. I'm going to track it backwards this time. Oh, looks like we lost. Let's try tracking it forwards and see if that's different. We've got some work to do though. I'm just going to recenter it here. Cool, that made it all the way to the end. And it's not perfect, but it's not bad. I think that'll work pretty well for us. Let's go along to the hand. And you can see here, this is going to be a bit trickier. Let's just see if we can track it. I'm going to hit normalize because the light conditions change a bit. Let's just see what happens if we try to go ahead and track that forwards. This looks like it might take a second. Okay, so all three of these are tracked pretty nicely. The hand was a little bit of a pain, but I'd say that's good for that shot. So let's go control space and full screen the other shot, the side view. And let's just go ahead and track these three points as well. Okay, that was really easy. Cool. Okay, so we've got the front shot tracked and we've got the side shot tracked. And now things get pretty funky. What I'm going to do is actually kind of scooch this one over a little bit and I'm going to hit N and T to get rid of our panels. And let's do the same here. And I'm going to take the top here and slide that down and just turn this into a 3D viewport. Okay, so here the deal is we're going to need a couple cameras here. So I'm going to take this guy and go Alt R and R X 90 just to reset the rotation. And if we go Alt G, it'll center in the middle of the scene. We could just bring that back on the Y axis. And I'm actually going to go control space for a second here to go into full screen. Seven on the number pad to go into top view. And this looks roughly right. I'm going to shift D to duplicate that and move the second camera out to the side here, rotate it by negative 90 degrees. So they're both pretty much matching up the way our actual real life cameras were. And so now I'm going to take this guy. Let's go control space again and select these tracking markers here. And under reconstruction, I'm going to go link empty to track. And these empties will show up right in the center here. Let's actually grab this camera and move it over on the X axis just a tiny bit. And then let's take this camera here and I'm going to go control and zero on the number pad to make that our active camera for a second. And now let's select these tracks and under reconstruction, link empty to track. Okay, so it's looking pretty good at the moment. There's a little bit of a mess going on just because they're so big. So I'm gonna box select them. And before I actually hit S to scale, I'm gonna hit period and then use individual origins so they don't move around. And just scale them down a little bit so we can see better. Let's go back to median point with period once again. Okay, so we can see the basic idea of what these guys are doing here. Now the tricky part is to match them up. So I'm gonna go one on the number pad to go into front view and let's hit six a little bit to orbit to kind of a 45 degree angle and then five on the number pad just to go back into orthographic view. And with our secondary witness camera here selected, we can just hit G and let's just kind of work on matching these up a little bit. If we grab that and move it in on the X axis, you can see the scale kind of gets messed up see if we can scale this one down a little bit so that the at least the length of the arm looks like it's roughly right. I'd say this bottom one is matching up pretty well and the top one is matching up pretty well also. So let's actually just grab that and line it up so they look pretty nice together and I think that's pretty good. So at this point, I'm just going to collapse the motion tracking panels. I'm also going to hit five on the number pad to go back out of orthographic view. 
Okay, now it is time to actually add in the empties that are going to represent the points. So now if we play the animation, you can see these empties are moving around. They're not actually moving around in 3D space really yet. They're both kind of in two-dimensional space. You can see they're just moving on a flat plane here, and the same with the other ones. But when we combine the information of these empties, we actually get 3D points that will track nicely to our arm. So what I'm going to do is let's go for this camera here. I'm going to set it as the active camera by control and zero on the number pad. And let's set this camera up to have a background image, just going into the camera properties, background images. Let's check that and add in our main clip. Okay, you can see these empties are tracking pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and add those points in here. If we go Shift S and go cursor to selected, I'm going to actually go Shift A and add in another empty. Not to make things too confusing, I'm going to use a sphere and I'm going to scale this down to a pretty decent size here. And now what I'm going to do is name this empty. Let's just call it elbow. And also I'm going to snap out of orthographic view with five. And let's go for this empty into the constraints tab. And I'm going to go add constraint, copy location. And the target object is going to be this track here. And so now if we play it back, it moves around with that track. But we also want to get the Y axis information from this tracker to be applied to this empty. So what I'm going to do is add in another constraint, another copy location and I'm going to use the dropper tool to select this elbow track. And you can see it swaps allegiance to this one. And what we really want to do is make it so that the X and Z information of this track is applied to this empty, and then the Y information of this track is applied to this empty. So we can do that pretty simply in the constraints tab here by just unchecking the Y information for the first one, and then unchecking everything but the Y information for the second one. And now it uses the depth of the second and the X and Z of the first. And now you can see it's moving around in 3D space, which is super cool. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other points here. I'm going to select the shoulder track. Let's go Shift S, cursor to selected, add in that spherical empty, scale it down. Okay, cool. Now you can see we've got these moving around, all of them in 3D space, which is super awesome. I love this, it just makes me so excited. <laughs> okay, so now if we want some icing on our cake, we can grab the robot arm from the other file here, and I'm just gonna select the rig, go shift and right bracket just to select all the child objects. And let's go control C and copy this and let's go control V into this scene. And you can see what we import here by accident is an extra camera and the extra empties. And so as not to confuse everything here, I'm just gonna grab this extra camera, move it off to the side here. If we update the frame, the robot arm here will get out of the way, that's good. Okay, so let's just organize our empties real quick. I'm gonna select the track empties and let's move these to a different collection. So I'm gonna go M new collection, tracks, and we'll just hit OK there and disable that collection so they're not bothering us. And now we're just left with our points in 3D space. Let's just name these really quick. Uh oh, we've got some overlapping names going on. <laughs> I named these empties before the exact same things. So this is shoulder 001 and this is hand 001. All right, so let's remap this arm. I'm gonna go into pose mode and you'll remember our bones here are mapped with copy location constraints. If we hit X here, and use the dropper tool to remap them, that bone snaps there. And let's see, pretty sure this is the elbow bone here. So we can remap that to go back into the elbow. And then our hand. There we go. And I've got offset checked here. So these bones have a bit of a mind of their own, not to mention some of them actually have keyframes from our last shot. So let's delete those keyframes and just recenter them 
on the points where they're supposed to be. Okay, that's looking good. Let's just match up the shoulder as well. And there we go. Let's also just recenter this hand bone on the Y axis. There we go. And we can grab this and recenter it on the Y axis as well. And now for the big moment, let's play this back and see what we get. Hey, <laughs> that's super cool. Complete motion capture in 3D space. Super cool. And if we look at it from this camera, actually, go control and zero on the number pad. Let's add in a background image real quick of our witness camera. Here it is. Cool. Let's track into that pretty nicely too. If we want it to match up a little bit better, we can adjust the position of our bones like this. There we go. Nice. Robotic arms are awesome. <laughs> cool. So we could probably clean this scene up a little bit more, get rid of our extra objects here that we don't need. But I would say that is pretty much it. I've got a whole bunch of tutorials for the compositing process of removing the actual arm here and then replacing it with the robotic arm and doing all that nice compositing to get it look nice. If you found this interesting and you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, there's a completely free video that I've created for you that goes over five different tips for integrating your CG creations into real life footage, kind of similar to what we're doing right here, but a little bit more in depth. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. Definitely go ahead and give that a click. But hey, I'm pretty much done here. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.